question of leasing versus buying a car comes up all the time and depending on who you talk to can be rather controversial. What is the better financial decision though? In order to figure that out, we need to figure out what the total cost of car ownership is per year in order to get a fair comparison between leasing and buying a car. It sounds pretty simple, but there are a lot of factors that we want to break down in today's video. In addition, there's also intangibles that you might want to consider before buying versus leasing a car, such as depreciation, maintenance plans, and just the feeling of overall ownership. Costs these days can vary quite widely as the current auto loan interest rates are higher than ever, bringing the average monthly car payment of a new car in America to almost $729 per month. If you do want a cheaper monthly payment though, people usually tend to lease their cars in this situation. So I don't know if you know this already, but when you are leasing a car, you're basically renting the car for a set period of time. Usually about three years is the standard term. And at the end of three years, you need to give that car back to the car dealership. During those three years, you're making monthly payments on the car and those monthly payments cover four different things. The first is depreciation. Since cars lose value over time, when you lease a car, what you're essentially doing is you're paying for how much the car's value goes down during the time that you're leasing it. For example, if a car is worth $30,000 at the beginning of the lease and then $20,000 at the end of the three-year lease term, you're essentially making payments on the $10,000 loss in value over that lease term. Number two, your monthly payment also covers a interest or a finance charge. The car dealership leasing the car to you is lending you the car value for the lease's term. So you're gonna pay a finance charge for this, and this is usually determined by the car dealership's bank as well as broad economic factors like the current interest rate. Your monthly payment will also cover any taxes associated with the lease, that's factor number three, as well as any fees with the lease, that's number four. Leasing then is usually cheaper on on a monthly basis than buying a car and financing it because leasing, you're only really covering the difference in loss and value of depreciation and you're not basically financing the entire value of the car right then. So let's use an example here because that usually illustrates it a little bit better. Say we wanted to buy this Toyota RAV4 hybrid, which suggested retail price is $31,475. Say you wanna lease it for three years and pretend you make a down payment of $3,000 on this car, which is a pretty typical ask for a three year lease term. All right, so the term is three years years, you'll get 12,000 miles a year. And at the end of the lease, you'll be able to buy this car outright from the dealer for their set residual value of $21,088. If you're wondering how I got this number, I just looked it up on the Edmunds.com car forums where you can find the residual value of almost any car you're looking at buying. The information is typically crowdsourced from other car dealers all across the country and usually just requires a Google search. You can see this post that I found from a couple months ago. This says that the RAV4 LE hybrid that we were looking at has a residual value of 67%. So I simply just multiplied 67% times our purchase price of 31,475. That means the total amount that you're gonna pay on your car lease over three years is the $3,000 down payment, as we talked about before, as well as all of the payments added together. So that's $394 a month for 36 months. That brings our grand total to $17,184 to lease the car for three years. That's how much we would have paid in total. And at the end of three years, you're given the option to buy the car outright for $21,088. Let's pretend at the end of those three years, you buy the car outright. That way we can compare the cost of leasing to the cost of buying in terms of total cost of the vehicle. That means you're able to own your Toyota RAV4 hybrid after the lease ends for a total of $38,272. Okay, let's go ahead and run the numbers for buying the car. But before we do that, make sure to subscribe to this channel if you haven't subscribed already. I'm planning on releasing a bunch of videos in 2024 about financial topics just like this one and subscribing is free and you can always change your mind later even though secretly I hope you don't actually change your mind and you just never unsubscribe from my channel forever. I'm just kidding, you can do what you want, but let's talk about buying now. All right, so when it comes to buying, you'll typically make a down payment on the car and then you're gonna finance the rest of the car over that term, whatever you choose. And the terms are usually a little bit longer, usually five or six years. What that means is that you're taking on a loan with the financial institution that's usually provided to you by the car dealership and you're making payments on that loan, so principal and interest for the entire life of that loan until you pay off the car. Your interest rate is going to vary differently depending on what the economic factors are at the time, so what the interest rates are in the United States, as well as what your personal credit score is. With an excellent credit score these days, usually the interest rates for an auto loan are between five and 6%, so we'll use 6% in today's video. Now, of course, if you are watching this in the future and interest rates have come down, what you can do is just Google the fact, you can just Google this, average car loan interest rates and the month and the year that you are currently in, and you'll probably get an average estimate of what your interest 
interest rate is gonna be. All right, so using a 6% interest rate, again, the car that we're looking at is $31,475. We'll also make a down payment of $3,000. And let's pretend that we're gonna finance this vehicle for five years or 60 months. That means our monthly payment here is going to be $551 a month. We'll be paying that for 60 months. And at the end of five years, the Toyota RAV4 actually keeps its value quite well and only depreciates 21% according to caredge.com. That means at the end of five years, we can resell this car for $24,865. Of course, this is the Toyota RAV4 on caredge.com. It might not be the hybrid version. So if we wanna take a more conservative approach, we can say that we can resell the car for maybe 24,000 or 23,000. It doesn't really matter as long as you are comfortable with your estimate and your are playing around with that calculation for your own situation. In any case, let's continue with our example. That means the total cost of car ownership for this Toyota RAV4 hybrid is going to be our down payment, which is $3,000, plus the monthly payments of $551 times 60 months. And that's going to give us a grand total of $36,060 to own this car outright by financing it. If you think about that on a per year basis, that's $7,212 of car ownership per year, excluding any maintenance and insurance and miscellaneous things that we might wanna buy for our car. But again, if we want the true cost of car ownership, we can actually sell the car to somebody else, ideally for the resale value that we can get in the market. So if you were to hypothetically sell this car for the market value of $24,865, that means your total cost of car ownership for the past five years has been the total price that you paid, $36,060, minus the price that you can sell it for, $24,865. That brings your grand total to $11,595 over five years. All right, but I know what you were thinking right now, which is that Humphrey, you just compared a five-year financing term to a three-year lease term. You can't compare these two. These are not apples to apples comparisons, and I definitely agree with you. So let's do the same numbers for a three-year financing period. If we were to buy the car outright over three years, we would still make the same down payment of $3,000, but our monthly payments would now be $866 for 36 months. That brings our grand total to buying the car in three years to $34,176. You can see here that if you finance it for just three years, the overall total cost of the car is a lot lower because you're not paying that much in interest. However, the monthly payments are a lot less manageable. So here's what a full table of what the total cost looks like of this particular car across financing and leasing and the different terms. So if you buy the car for over three years, 34,176. If you buy the car over five years, it's gonna cost you $36,060. And if you lease the car and then buy it after the lease is over, it's gonna cost you $38,272. But now what I wanna do is actually compare the cost of car ownership over a certain amount of time, especially if you just want to return the car after three years. So in this hypothetical example, we are going to return the car after we leased it for three years, figure out what the costs are for that. As well as if we bought the car, we're gonna buy the car and then sell the car after three years and see how much it costs us there. In the buying scenario, if we use the three-year cost, that means the total cost of the car is $34,176. And then we can sell it for $26,124 because it's depreciated a little bit less than the five-year number. Your total cost of car ownership is going to be $8,052 over those three years. In the leasing scenario, we only put our down payment down, so that's $3,000, and our monthly payments of $14,184 over three years. So $17,000 $184 was spent on the lease over three years, and then you turn the car back in. That is a huge disparity, right? Like $17,000 or more to basically lease a car for three years or $8,000 to own the car for three years and then sell it off. We'll talk about how we're gonna resolve that in a second here, but there is one huge reason we actually need to consider here when we're talking about this situation. And that is that oftentimes the residual purchase price of the car is gonna be a lot lower than the market value that you're going to be able to get for that same used car in the market. Remember in our earlier example, when I said you could lease the car for three years and then you had the option to buy it for $21,088. But if you were to own the car outright for three or five years, you could sell the car for close to 25 4,000 or even $26,000. So what gives there? The reason this is happening is quote, because today's used car market has a lot of demand. That means your car's resale value is almost guaranteed to be much higher than your residual value. In other words, you'll be able to buy your lease for much less than you would be able to sell it for. So each car is gonna be a little bit different depending on the used car market at the time. Now to get a fair apples to apples comparison of leasing costs versus buying costs after you don't have the car anymore, let's pretend the person 
who leased the car actually bought the car outright, got the residual value price that they got, 21,088, and then resold it for $26,000 or so. That means that particular person would have paid $38,272 for the total car plus the lease. And then they got back $26,124, bringing their total cost of leasing to $12,148. So here's what that looks like on a yearly basis in this table right here. If we bought the car, it would have cost us $8,052 total. And if we leased the car, it would have cost us $12,148 total. That means the car ownership per year cost for this particular situation was $26.84 per year in terms of buying or $4,049 per year in terms of leasing. So based on the math right here for this particular car, it's definitely more economical to buy the car rather than to lease the car in this situation. And the big takeaway for this video is that for most people and most cars, it's going to be more financially economical or financially prudent to buy a car, especially if you're planning on owning the car for a long period of time over five, six, or seven years. Of course, this is going to depend on a lot of things like depreciation and residual value, as well as what you can get for it in the used car market. If you're wondering how it's going to work out for you and your particular make and model, you need to run the numbers yourself. There are going to be some scenarios in which there are cars that are much better to lease than to buy. For example, let's pretend that you wanted to drive a Range Rover or some sort of sports car that has high maintenance costs and a lot of depreciation. These are sometimes better to lease because you can drive a luxury car for a lot cheaper than owning it outright. If it has maintenance issues, it will likely be covered by the dealer. And oftentimes you are only paying tax on the depreciated car amount rather than the leased car amount. Leasing a car might also depend on your personal situation. If you're the type of person who wants to lease or try a new different car every single three years, and you're really not that diligent in taking care of your car, perhaps leasing is a better option for you. Leasing may also be good for someone who runs a business and needs a car as part of that business and is able to write off some of those payments, netting them some savings over time. The other great thing about leasing is that you generally don't have to worry about car maintenance at all. Usually they have dealer warranties for whenever you're leasing the car for the entire term so that if there is an issue, you can just bring it to the dealership and they will fix it for you. But with leasing also comes some disadvantages as well. Oftentimes there are mileage limits. So if you get a lease that can only allow you to drive 10,000 miles a year, if you go over those 10,000 miles, you generally have to pay 10 cents or 25 cents per mile that you go over. Over. Of course, when you buy the car, you don't really even have to worry about that. You can put as many miles on the car as you need to, and you just generally don't have to worry and you have that peace of mind. Another disadvantage of leasing, in my opinion, is that if you get into a lease for three or four years and you don't like the car after, let's say, six months or 12 months, you're generally stuck in that lease unless you're willing to pay a early termination fee, and that can actually be pretty hefty. And lastly, I think one of the disadvantages of the lease is that at the end of the lease term, you don't have a car to show for it, and you generally have to be expected to pony up and pay the entire amount if you want to buy it outright. So what I want to sum up here is that buying is probably better for somebody that fits the following four criteria. Number one, you're probably someone that wants the best financial option in most situations. And then number two, you don't mind driving the same car for five, eight, 10, 12, 15 years. Number three, you actually like the sense of ownership and that makes you proud and it gives you some peace of mind. And number four, you don't really wanna to have to deal with the limitations that a lease will put on you. Leasing is generally better for somebody who fits the following criteria. So number one, they want a new car every three or four years. Number two, you're somebody that wants to drive more of a car for a lower monthly payment. So maybe you're eyeing a sports car, you could generally get a lower payment for that than if you were to finance it with the dealership. Number three, leasing is better for you if you don't think you're gonna go over the mileage limits. Like let's say you know that you don't drive that often, then perhaps leasing is a good option. And number four, leasing is pretty good for those business owners who are able to write off a portion of their lease payments from their business. All right, I hope this video was helpful. If you did enjoy it, make sure to subscribe to this channel and check out my next video on cars that I'll leave up right here for you guys. And I will see you guys in the next video. All right, peace.